Hello everyone, my name is Ayub Khuyi and I am an additive manufacturing engineer from iMaker. And we have here with us today, uh, Khoyam. Hi, yeah. today, how are you? I'm doing good, thank you, thank good. you, thank you very much. So how was the first day here at uh, Form Next? Yeah, it was great, yeah, and today, yesterday, I think today was busier than yesterday. It was yesterday. busy a bit, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I think more people have, have come out to the show, but it's been great, it's been really busy. You know, I've met nice. lots of people, had some good conversations. Yeah. Sure. It's always great to meet with the resellers, with the customers, with the clients. It's always good to uh, see them here. Amazing. Yeah. 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 So here we have one of the Asica uh, printers, as you can see. So can you walk us through the name, the specifications, what's new about it? Yeah, sure. So this is the Pro 4K XL. This is a larger version of the Pro 4K. Mm -hmm. We launched this a few months ago, um, specifically for industry, so general manufacturing, with a 400 millimeter Z height, so we can produce much larger scale components. The build plate size is 217 by 122, and with a 400 mil Z height, we, yeah, we can produce much larger parts. Was this printed with this uh, printer? It was print. This is a. Um, an Evonik material printed on the 4K XL, yeah. Amazing. It's quite so heavy, actually. Yeah, yeah. So this is, because we're an open material um, system. Exactly. So we've got I was going to ask about a that. A wide range of materials, so over 500 now in our library. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the materials from Evonik. Amazing. Amazing. That's really good. So concerning the resolution, for example, let's talk about the layer of thickness. How thin can you go? So we can control the Z height in one micron increments. One so you can, users have a full full access to which layer that best suits their part. Mm -hmm. So we can you can go down to one micron. Typically we say anywhere from 10 microns. So for jewelry you'd print maybe at 10 microns or 25. This was printed at 100 microns, but you can print it at 50. You can choose any layer thickness. So we have presets in software, but you can you can define the layer thickness to best suit what you want to produce. Amazing. Um, as you mentioned, the dental or the jewelry applications. Yeah. What other applications we can use this uh, printer for? So with a with a number one supplier to the audiology sector for manufacturing audiology. hearing aids, um, but our primary markets are dentistry, audiology, jewelry. jewelry we do well. we do a lot in microfluidics, um, miniatures, medical models like for ma uh, maxillofacial. Um, and yeah, just general general industry now. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. So, as for the materials or the resin that you can use with this uh, printer, can you give us some um, like you know names or like you know examples of the resins? Yeah. So, from an industrial perspective, exactly. we're compatible with materials from Henkel Loctite, uh -huh. from BASF, mm -hmm. Evonik, mm -hmm. Polyspectra. There's a wide range of industrial materials. Obviously, you can see around the halls. For sure. There's yeah, lots of polymer sure. manufacturers developing yeah. new materials from high impact, resistant, tough materials to elastomeric materials. For sure. Yeah. And the beauty of the open system that we provide is that we, we build the material profiles for the customer. So they're a plug and play setting. So once that material is available, our customers, they visit our open material library, download the profile, plug it into software and away they go, they can start printing straight away. Amazing. So as we're talking about, you know, printing and all the resin uh, parts here, considering the software, the slicing of software, so what's the name of it? Composer. It's Composer. Sega Composer, yeah. So does it come with the printer as a package or should it, like, you know, is it like a free software? So yeah, how, it's included. So how, yeah. yeah, sorry, it's included with yeah. all the Sega printers. It's an open install license, so you can install it on any number of um, PCs or yeah. laptops. It's compatible with Windows, Mac, and Linux. And uh, we've re we've recently um, introduced a new support um, setting called Lattice Supports, mm -hmm. which provides a really really robust structural web around the object, so it holds it in position whilst it's being printed, mm -hmm. it avoids all critical features and details. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, that's how I see Amazing. it. Amazing, great, that, great. Uh, again, the next question will be re like regarding the speed of the printing. Mm -hmm. How fast can this printer go? So it depends on the material. Uh huh. Um, but we the, the range the, from a well, we get we get speeds of up to about sixty millimeters an hour. Impressive. Um, and then it really comes down to the object that you're printing. So for depends things like this, if you want to print something quickly, that's the that's the speed that you can achieve. If you want to really slow the printer down to get a really high definition, then yeah, that, that's down against the application. Fair and, enough, yeah. amazing. For example, this part that we have here, this real example, 
Uh, how long do you reckon this one can take? Took about 12, 12 hours. 12 hours. Yeah. That's pretty good. And how long is it? I think it's the whole... It's 400 millimeters. 400 millimeters. Yeah. Impressive, quite impressive. Is there anything else that you want to add about this uh, printer? Anything interesting, unique about it? So the main unique feature of a Sega printer is that we focus on the formation of every layer to make sure that the la every layer is formed correctly. So we've got our smart positioning system, which is which detects the actual position of the build platform, so we know where the build platform is for every layer. Mm -hmm. And we've also got an internal radiometer or light meter that reads the actual LED power. So when we're right. curing the material, we know how long to cure for based on actual power. So we, we, get, we get consistent layering for every layer. Interesting, that's really interesting. As you mentioned the LED light, so what's the source of the UV light here again? So it's UV, this is 385 nanometers, yeah. 385 nanometers, yeah. that's good, thank you very much. And we, yeah. we specify 385 for a more accurate output, because yeah. we, at 385 wavelength, the materials the cure much quicker, uh -huh. so you get a much sharper finish on the yeah, image, and sure. ultimately that gives you a better definition on the object that you're printing. For sure, definitely, yeah. yeah. Thank you. So one last question. When was this released, actually? It was released about three months ago. So it's still new, actually. It's still, this still a, year. Yeah, actually. still relatively new, yeah. Amazing. Great. Thank you very much. So is there anything interesting you want to show us here? Yeah, so we'll, I'll show you a yeah, new of course. a product that's soon to come to market. Uh -huh. So for, for objects that require polishing, uh -huh. we've got a new um, a new component that's compatible with all the systems uh -huh. where we take a for, especially for printing clear mm -hmm. parts print after washing they come up with a polished finish sure. so you can see the the large bottle at the back that's a clear that material in our standard print process now but this bottle at the front that's with our new the the new technology that we mm -hmm. will introduce to so our users will have access to it but it will produce parts with a glossy polished finish Amazing. from the printer. So basically now the print comes out like that. Yep, with a matte finish. With a matte finish. And then and in the future you're looking for like something like this. It will come out polished. So for applications like audiology in the or for um, splints, this is directly off the printer. So these parts have been washed, they've been cured, and that's the surface finish. It's really clear, by the way. It yeah, looks it's clear neat. and polished. Yeah, sure, definitely. I see the blue one. Can you elaborate about that one, please? Is so that, like a, yeah, yeah, that's a that's a hear, hearing protection device. Uh -huh. So they they're tinted either in they're normally blue and red. Uh huh. Yeah. So red for the right ear and blue uh -huh. for the left ear. So so oh, the makes sense. people wearing them know yeah. which ear they go in. Makes sense. So they're custom Perfect. devices for hearing applications. For hearing applications. Yeah. Amazing. That's really good actually. So this is like the future of Asika, uh, like research here. The, from from this, this from this. Yeah. The, for the polished finish the, on the yes, on the, the final finish. parts. This is yeah a new development that will launch. New development. By the yeah. end of this year. Yeah. By the end of this year, like next month, basically. Soon. Soon. Amazing. That's really good. So what do we have else here you want to, you know, share with our clients and your clients and lovers of Asika? So we use the, the dirt bike example um, to showcase the compatibility with some of the leading industrial material manufacturers uh -huh. like BASF, Henkel and Nuvonic. The world leading resin uh, manufacturers, of course. Yeah. Also with Polyspectra as a US manufacturer of, uh -huh. of resins, but we, we we digitized a number of the components from the dirt bike. We've 3D printed them and they've been tested. We've ridden, but we, we use this as an, as an example at Rapid TCT in the US, mm -hmm. which was earlier this year. For sure. And we brought all the parts over um, to demonstrate, you know, these materials and the suitability for these applications. Great. So a number of these will be used from a prototype in perspective. Prototype, yeah. But it also shows that the the mechanical properties of some for of these sure. materials are really suitable for it's maybe well serial there. production sure. of some componentry. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And we have these examples over here. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So you've, there are there are like elastomeric materials here. Quite flexible. Yep. Yeah. Oh through to fully, fully rigid, tough materials for fairly critical components like a brake lever. For sure, yeah. So I didn't ride the bike, but my <laughs> colleague did. Yeah. And they've, they've performed really well. Um, Amazing. Can I ask which resin is this? So this is a, the BASF Ultra Cure ST45. ST45 Black. 
Yeah, amazing. That's really good. We've got right, there's the material here from from Henkel, which is a three one seven two. The HDT fifty. Yeah. Yeah. So both BSF and Henkel are, you know. Uh, validated to be used in Azigai. Yeah, so we've got we've got a range of manufacturers you can see up on the wall. There's over 500 materials now in our library. 500. The, behind each of these logos are a list of materials with all the profiles ready for our customers to download. So there's a, there's a range of industrial materials up there. We've got dental materials, medical, yeah. elastomeric materials, materials for microfluidics, for sure. jewelry casting, for, for a sure. whole a whole range of applications. Yeah, exactly. A lot of applications. Yeah. What about the resin of Azika? Well, let's say that again, sorry? The resins that you have actually from your uh, company, yeah, like so Azika, like yeah. the dental ones and everything? Yeah, we've got a range. We've got a range of industrial materials, which are Plaz series. Uh -huh. We've got a high temperature material called uh -huh. Fusion Grey. Uh -huh. We've got a range of jewelry casting materials. Interesting. Um, and we've got a range of, of, a comprehensive range of dental materials as well from 3D printed surgical guys to denture try-ins yeah. to general modeling materials, but very accurate and precise materials. For sure, definitely. But well, the, the exciting thing about the, uh -huh. our material library is that today we have 500 materials in uh -huh. there, but we are adding materials More on a weekly basis. There are, there are basis. new materials coming in each week, multiple materials each week, and new manufacturers approaching us to build compatibility. So it's really, um, it's adding value continuously for the users that have chosen the sure. yeah. Definitely, yeah. All right, thank you very much. One last question, please. Yeah. What makes Azika unique in the market? So, if you had to describe it. Yeah, I'd say that it comes down to, I think, two key things. One is the our layer formation, uh -huh. monitor, the monitoring of each layer, how we, how we form those layers and how we ensure that every layer is formed correctly. Yeah. That's number one. Number two is then the open material system. So customers can have real flexibility on the materials that they want to use for their application. Open source materials. We don't define well. the material that they use. They find the material that best suits them. And then they've got that win-win situation. Plus it future-proofs them. So as new materials come to market, they have access to those. And they can adjust any feature there, like layer thickness and everything yeah, if they, on the software. Yeah, they have full control over that. Full control of it. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you very much. That was really informative and really interesting. Again, thank you very much for having us here at your booth in uh, Formnext in uh, Frankfurt. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.